Okay, let's keep going. And this slide shows you the kidney's function. Previous slides, we talked about filtration. It happens around here. And after filtration, a lot of important molecules actually will be filtered in, like the sugar, the salt, water. So a lot of them need to be taken back. That's, that's reabsorption. So taking them from this tube back, that's reabsorption. And in the loop of Henle, this place also a lot of reabsorption. Now let's look at this. They move in, they move back. This is called secretion, like some toxic molecule. Your your body want to get rid of them quicker, and they will secrete from the outside is all blood vessel capillary. They will secrete from the capillary back into the tubule. Now let's look at this part. You found the dashed line. This part is they can be regulated based on your body need. So if you drink a lot of water, your urine is very diluted. And if you don't drink enough, you feel your urine is very concentrated. And the reason is this part. They can change to take more or less water back based on your body needs. And not just water. Water is the main one. Also the, the hydrogen ions and salt based on your body need. So they can take more or take less based on your body need. And because of that, your urine, once it reaches here, that's your urine. We know a lot of your body based on your urine. So we can take your urine sample to know what's going on in your body. And the water reabsorption based on the hormone called ADH, antidiuretic hormone. We talk about this hormone in your uh, endocrine system, in the endocrine system. And that's the hormone released from the posterior pituitary gland, ADH, also called uh, vasopressin. So the, w the place it works is in the kidney because you release more vasopressin, say your body is dehydrated, you're gonna release more ADH, and more ADH, you're gonna increase the reabsorption rate of water. It will take more water back, and turn out your urine is more concentrated when you are dehydrated. So this show you your nephron, and most of the time you have the water reabsorption in the descending loop, and ascending loop, that's mainly the salt reabsorption. So once the lumen, the liquid inside is called the lumen, and once it reaches here, and there's the environment is very similar to your urine. It's not, it's not uh, blood anymore. And without ADH release, because you take a lot of water back, you take the salt back as well. So the, the urine is very diluted. But when your body releases ADH, what happens is in the in the collecting duct area, they will take more water back. So you in the descending loop you take water back, ascending loop you take salt back, and in the collecting duct you take more water back, and eventually your urine become more and more concentrated. And that's what happens that when you are dehydrated, your urine is very concentrated because your body releases a lot of ADH to take a lot of water back. And alcohol can inhibit ADH release. So you may feel uh, after you drink beer, you, you have to pee a lot. The reason is alcohol inhibit ADH release. So in a normal situation, you have ADH, you can take a lot of water back. Your urine is no more concentration or concentrated. When you drink beer, it inhibit ADH release. So there is no ADH. And in the beer, you have a lot of water, so all this water will go through this tube without ADH to take the water back, they all go to your bladder. So when you drink beer, you, you pee a lot. Kidney have another function, is to trigger the, uh, the hormone release called the RAS system, renin adrenotensin 2. And that's the system to trigger First is it will constrict the efferent arterial. Its function is to uh, maintain your blood pressure. So I will use next few slides to explain it. Also, it will trigger adrenotensin 2 will trigger aldosterone release. Aldosterone is the hormone to, uh, to reabsorb sodium. So when you take sodium back, you, you keep water. Like a high blood pressure person, they should not eat too salty food because those sodium will keep water, the same purpose. So if you keep aldosterone, release aldosterone, it will trigger sodium reabsorption and you take water. 
And as you know, Tencent 2 will also trigger ADH release it keep water back. So this hormone pathway, renal as you know, Tencent 2 RAS system, its function is to maintain your maintain your water level in your body. So this pathway is being triggered when you are dehydrated. And why sodium is important? This is the lumen, and this is lumen inside, and this is your ECF. So you want to take those molecules back from your kidney back, and you have a lot of molecule will be filtered into your kidney. And you say, which one I should take back first? The first one is sodium. Because if you take sodium back, the N ion, the negative charge ion will follow. And after the sodium and N ions come back, water love to follow. Water will go to dilute those ions. And after water follow, the other ions and other molecules will love to follow the water. So it's like you have 20 different kind of marbles here. You don't know which one to take back. After you take sodium back, all the others will come back. That's why the sodium reabsorption is very important. In your body, you have the hormone called aldosterone directly uh, responsible for the sodium reabsorption. And the RAS pathway starts from here. So when your body is dehydrated, so your blood pressure drop, it will, as the kidney release renin. Renin is not a very important hormone. Its function is turn the adrenotensinogen into NG1. NG1 is uh, still not a very important hormone. But NG1 is staying in your plasma. It will touch an enzyme in your blood vessel, quickly turn into NG2. NG2 is a very important hormone in your body. Its function is it will trigger the vessel constriction, arterial, small, small artery. Once, once it triggers the vessel constriction, the resistance increase and the blood pressure increase. So it will fix your blood pressure. NG2 will also go to your CBCC, cardiovascular control center, increase your cardio output, sympathetic response, increase your cardio output. So your heart rate increase, your blood pressure increase. NG2 will also go to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus will trigger uh, vasopressin. Vasopressin will take water back, uh, more water back, blood pressure increase. And also hypothalamus trigger your thirst sensation. When you feel thirsty, you will drink water. It will fix the problem as well. And NG2 will go to your adrenal cortex, release aldosterone. That's the hormone trigger sodium reabsorption. And once you take sodium back, water follow. So all of them is will trigger their main job is to maintain your blood pressure. So when your blood pressure drop, RAS pathway will start to be activated, increase your blood pressure. And their trigger of the RAS pathway is actually around here. So part of the distal tubule and the efferent arterial. So these cells around here, we call them JG cells, Jack Stark or medulla cells, and they're the trigger of RAS pathway. They release renin. And this structure, they call them JG apparatus, including the uh, macula densa cells and also the JG cells. And after renin released, it will fix your blood pressure problem. So they were triggered when your blood pressure drop, release renin, and go through the RAS pathway and eventually maintain your blood pressure. So your blood pressure is part of the homeostasis. You want your blood pressure to be normal, not too high, not too low. And it will go through this pathway, RAS pathway, eventually maintain your blood pressure. And this is a summary of your kidney's function. So uh, we spent a lot of time talking about the nephron because that's the functional unit of your kidney. And they will do the filtration, reabsorption, and sometimes secretion. Eventually, uh, they become the urine and go out of your body. And this slide show you the osmolarity change. So start from about 300 milliOSM, that's the concentration of your blood. So in the beginning, the lumen environment is very similar to your blood. And once it goes through the loop, because more water been taken back, osmolarity start to increase. And then in the descending loop, and the salt being taken back, so osmolarity start to decrease. 
And in the collecting duct, this is the part based on your body environment. They can take more or take less water back. So your urine can be very concentrated if they take a lot of water back when you're dehydrated. But your urine can also be very diluted if they take no water back. And that's when your body have a lot of water. Your urine is very diluted. So it depends on your body situation. The other structures are much easier. The other structure in your renal system, their job is uh, the container or the pipes to store the urine or pass the urine out. So like the bladder, a uh, bladder is the container for the for the urine and it will go through the urethra and come out. So that's the male system. And the males, this part, they share with the reproductive system. So the bladder is the container and the urethra will, will send the urine out. And this is the prostate gland. Prostate gland belongs to the reproductive system. Uh, in the semen, the main, main product, main volume actually come from the secretion of prostate gland. And this organ grow forever. It can grow bigger and bigger. So when you're 80 years old, this organ is very big. And they can press urethra. So pretty much every male, uh, when they're getting old enough, they have problem for urination. And the reason is prostate gland, it press urethra. Because the male, uh, the renal system and reproductive system, they share after this part. In female, they are, they are separated. So this is the female's uh, renal, renal system. So you have bladder and that's urethra. And this is reproductive system. They're totally separated. But they, are, they have advantage. They also have disadvantage. Disadvantage is the urethra is much shorter. So it's easier for the bacteria to go from here to here, cause the bladder infection. It happens more frequently in female than male because of, of the anatomical structure. And the second one is this is the the uterus. So when you have baby, uh, when you are in third trimester, the baby, the, the uterus is huge. It's going to press the, the blader. So in the third trimester, it happens in every pregnant woman. So they feel like they have to pee a lot. And it's actually because of the, the blader being, being suppressed by the, the weight of the uh, uterus. Okay, that's it.